Hello and welcome to my channel All About Accountancy where we convert your accounting problems into solutions. I am your host Professor Tanmay Kesarkar and today I bring you the second episode of Subsidiary Books. If you missed it, I started a new series called Subsidiary Books last Wednesday and today is the second episode of that series. So in my last episode I told you that subsidiary books are subdivisions of a journal. Whenever a journal is divided into various subsections or various subdivisions those subdivisions are called subsidiary books. I also told you that it is always better to maintain a lot of subsidiary books and record your transactions in those subsidiary books rather than recording them in one single journal. So you can also say that the subsidiary books are substitutes of a journal. When you maintain subsidiary books there is division of labor which will increase the efficiency of your workers and also save their time. Maintaining subsidiary books also makes future reference easy. Now there are around 8 to 9 subsidiary books but we have only 6 subsidiary books in our syllabus. So today we are going to talk about one of the subsidiary books which is the most popular I would say that is a cash book. A cash book is a subsidiary book which records strictly cash transactions. If cash is involved in your transactions, whether you are receiving cash or whether you are paying cash, it has to be recorded into the cash book. Now when I say cash transactions, I am not only sticking to cash but I am also talking about bank transactions. Now a cash book can be further divided into three types. So we have simple cash book, multiple column cash book and a petty cash book. Today we are only going to talk about the simple cash book and I will cover multiple column cash book and petty cash book in my future videos. As the name says a simple column cash book is very simple. It records strictly cash transactions only. You know just now I told you that when I talk about cash transactions it also includes bank. Right? But when we are doing the simple cash book we are only going to focus on cash. The features of a simple cash book are somewhat like these. First point is that it focuses only on cash. Bank is completely ignored. So whenever you are making a simple cash book, you are supposed to focus strictly on cash. If you are receiving cash or if you are paying cash, it will come in the simple cash book. However, if you are making any transactions through your bank account, you have to completely ignore those transactions. Now again, if it is partly bank and partly cash, then you are supposed to write only the cash part of the transaction. For example, if you made a purchase of rupees 10,000 and you paid 7,000 in cash and 3,000 by check, I will record only the 7,000 part of the transaction. The 3,000 part will not be recorded by me. So a simple cash book focuses only on cash and it ignores bank. Secondly, it has a single column. Hence, it is also called a single column cash book. And last but certainly not the least, a simple cash book is normally maintained by small traders. Now, huge traders can also maintain a simple cash book. But as far as I know, huge traders would not want to maintain a simple cash book. They would always try to make a multiple column cash book. With that said, let us directly get into an illustration and see how to solve a sum based on simple cash book. So I am going to do this sum right now. So let's get started. In order to start the sum, you should know the name of the person for whom you are making this cash book. So the question says, prepare cash book for Mr. Matthews for the month of March 2018. Right? So this is the cash book of Mr. Matthews. So let us write cash book of Mr. Matthews. Now there is a debit side and there is a credit side. So I am going to write DR which stands for debit record and CR which stands for credit record in the same line of the heading. After that I have to make certain columns. So before making columns I will divide my page or divide my board into half. So I will divide my board into half vertically roughly. So I have drawn some lines over here. Now let us see what is the heading of each column. So the first column that you see over here is the date column. Date. After date you are supposed to write receipts. So this is the receipts column. After receipts you are supposed to write the number of the receipt. So receipt number. R number. 
After receipt number, you are supposed to make a ledger folio. After making ledger folio, that is LF, you are supposed to make a column for amount. This is your debit side. Then you have to repeat the columns on the credit side, but there is a slight twist. The date column remains the same, date. And receipts will be converted to the opposite of receipts, that is payments. So when there are receipts, you have a receipt number. Similarly, when there are payments, you have a voucher number. So VN, V number. After that, LF remains LF, ledger folio and amount. Simple. Now when you make a multiple column cash book, the amount columns are multiplied. So there are two columns, three columns or even four columns in some cases. So the debit side is the receipt side and the credit side is the payment side. Whenever you receive money, you are supposed to write it on the debit side and whenever you pay money, you are supposed to write it on the credit side. Again, never forget that you are always preparing the books for the business organization. Though I have written cash book of Mr. Matthews, it is for the business of Mr. Matthews, not for his personal use. So if anything that is personal, you should ignore it. After your format is ready, we can start with the sum. March 1st, started business with cash rupees 50,000. Now I need to know whether I am receiving money or I am paying money. That's simple. Once you know that you are receiving money, you are supposed to write it over here. Once you know that your business organization is paying money, you will write it on the credit side. Simple. So when I start business, as a businessman, my money is going. But as a business organization, I am receiving money from the owner. And whenever you receive money from the owner, it is called capital. Right. So before writing anything, let us write the year and the month on both the sides. So 2018, 2018, this is what March. So I am just writing M over here, March. And then the dates, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, however the dates go. So again, started business with cash, which means the business organization is getting money to start its business. And whenever I get money to start the business, it is called capital. First of all, I am getting money, right? So I will write it over here on the receipt side. And how am I getting money in form of capital? So date is first, right? Hmm. Two capital account and the amount is 50,000. Now just like a journal, even a cash book has narrations. So I will be dictating the narrations. It is on you whether you want to write it or you don't want to write it. The narration for this is being business started with cash. The next transaction is March 3rd purchase goods for cash 20,000. You have purchased goods for cash. So one question, are you receiving money or are you paying money? You are paying money, right? So it will come on the payment side. So the date for this is 3. Now what am I doing with this cash? I am purchasing goods, right? So buy purchase account. Amount is 20k. Now something new. The debit side always has the prefix of 2. And the credit side always has the prefix of buy. This is something that you are going to see in a lot of sums in the future. Now 2 is not new for you. Whenever you do journal entries, it is cash to capital, purchase to cash, right? So 2 is not new to you. Something that is new to you is buy. So all the transactions on the debit side will have 2 as a prefix and all the transactions on the credit side will have buy as a prefix. Clear till here? Narration being goods purchased for cash after this the next transaction purchase goods from Kylie on credit rupees 10,000 
So what should I do with this entry? I have purchased goods on credit from Kylie. That is cash is not present. Hence I will ignore this entry. Next entry, sold goods for cash 25,000. I am selling goods in return of cash. So am I receiving cash or paying cash? Receiving cash. So let us receive it over here. The date is 9, 2. How am I receiving it? Through sales. So to sales account. Amount is 25,000. Clear? Narration being goods sold for cash. Any doubts till here? If you have any doubts, please rewind the video and re watch it so that it would help you to understand. Many times you have to listen to a concept twice or thrice in order to grasp it, depending on your grasping power. As I am making a video, I cannot satisfy everyone's speed. For some students, I am still slow. For some, I am a bit faster. So please adjust the lectures, adjust the videos as per your speed. Moving further with the sum. 12th March, paid electricity bills 1500. I am paying money, so obviously it will come on the payment side. The date is 12. By electricity charges account 1500 or 1.5k. Narration being electricity bills paid. Next transaction. Received rent rupees 3000. Here, without a doubt, I am receiving money, so I will write on the receipt side. The date is 16 to rent account. 3000 narration being rent received moving on march 19th paid cash to kylie rupees 8500 as full settlement now i am paying some cash to kylie in full settlement what are we making over here we are making a cash book so out of the entire transaction we are only concerned about how much money was paid in this transaction so let us read the transaction again Paid cash to Kylie rupees 8500 as full settlement. Now for me as a cashier, it does not bother me whether it was full settlement or half settlement. All that I need is how much cash did you pay? You paid 8500. So that is the only amount that concerns me. I don't need to know what is my discount. I don't need to know how much was the actual amount to be paid. Nothing. All I need to know is how much cash did I pay in reality. So I paid 8500 to whom I paid it to Kylie. So it will come on the payment side by Kylie's account. 8500 paid to Kylie on 19th. Clear? Narration being cash paid to Kylie as full settlement. 22nd March, withdrew cash for personal use rupees 2000. Whenever you withdrew cash for personal use, it is called drawings. And you are withdrawing cash, that is the owner is withdrawing cash from the business. So for the business organization, the cash is going out. Right? That is, I am making a payment. So, 22nd by drawings account. Two thousand. So whenever there are drawings made, I am paying the cash to the owner. So the cash is going out of my business, hence credited. Next transaction, 25th March, sold goods to Marshall on credit, 15,000. Now again, I have sold the goods to Marshall on credit basis, which means cash is not involved, which means I am not going to record it in the cash book. Next entry, deposited cash into current bank account, rupees 1000. Now here it is very important whether you are depositing the cash in a current account or a savings account. A current account is meant for business, which means that you are just moving your cash from here to there. However, if you are depositing money in your savings bank account, which means you are going to use it for your personal use, which means again it is drawings. So always pay attention where are you actually depositing your money. If you are depositing your money in current account, it is a business transaction. 
However, if you are depositing your money in a savings bank account, it is not a business transaction, it is a drawings transaction. Clear? So this transaction is a business transaction. I am paying money into my bank account. Though the bank account belongs to me, the money is going to stay with me. But is it going to stay with me in the form of cash? No, I am converting it into my bank account, which means I am paying money. So I am going to record it over here. Date is 27. By bank account because bank is the receiver of this cash or I am depositing the cash into my bank account and the amount is 1000. Narration being cash deposited in bank. You can also write being cash deposited in current bank account but it does not matter because the entry is going to remain the same. The next transaction received cash from Marshall rupees 12,000 as full settlement. Again, I do not want to know whether it was full settlement or half settlement. All I want to know is how much money am I receiving. I am receiving 12,000 rupees and as I am receiving money, I will write it on the receipt side. So the date is 30 and I am receiving it from Marshall. So Marshall's account and the amount is 12,000. I don't want to know what was your discount, what was the actual amount to be paid, nothing. I am a cashier. The only thing that I need to focus is that what is the amount of cash am I receiving and what is the amount of cash that I am paying. That's it. You don't need to know the backstory of it. Here is where it becomes easier to maintain a cash book rather than maintaining a journal. See, I am eliminating so many transactions, I am eliminating so many complications just by preparing a subsidiary book. Hence, it is always beneficial to make as many subsidiary books as you can, divide the work into various departments and it will save time. Being cash received from Marshall as full settlement. Moving ahead, the last transaction deposited rupees 9000 in my savings bank account. This is what I was talking about. I am depositing money in my savings bank account which means I am going to use it for my private personal purpose. Which means that this is a drawings transaction. Anyhow, the money is going out of my business so I am going to credit it. So the date is 31st and as I am going to credit it for my personal purpose it should be by drawings account. And the amount is 9000. Narration being cash deposited in savings bank account. With this we have come to the end of this sum. At the end of the month you want to calculate how much amount is remaining with you. Even when you get pocket money from your parents. You always calculate at the end of the month that oh only 100 rupees are remaining. Only 20 rupees are remaining. Like that even a business organization would like to know how much money is remaining at the end of the month. So we need to close this account in order to see how much money is left. Now a trick for a simple cash book is that the debit side is always heavy. Because cash is your asset and assets always have a debit balance. So how to close this? Leave one line on both the sides and close it. After this, you have to take the totals of both the sides but don't write it anywhere. Just memorize it. So the total of the debit side is 50, 25, 75. 75 and 5, 80, 90,000 is the total of the debit side. However, the credit side is 20, 30, 40, 42. So obviously 90,000 is greater than 42,000. So I am going to write 90,000 on both the sides. It's like a game of majority wins. 90,000 is greater and hence it is written on both the sides. Now, you are supposed to calculate the balance, total income or the total amount of cash that you had in the entire month was 90,000 out of which I spent how much? 42, right? So 
90,000 minus 42,000 will give you the amount of cash that is still remaining in your hand. So 90,000 minus 42 gives me 48, 48k. This is the balance which is called by balance CD and the date is the last date of the month because normally balance is calculated on the last day of the month. So 31st March by balance CD 48,000 and in the next month that is for the month of April this balance CD that is closing balance will become balance BD that is opening balance. So April 1st to balance BD 48,000 to balance BD 48,000 this comes over here now how to remember where to write CD and where to write BD simple whenever you are closing the account you are supposed to write CD C for closing, C for CD. The full form of balance CD is balance carried down and balance BD stands for balance brought down. Just like CF and BF carried forward, brought forward, just like that. So again, let us revise the closing procedure very quick. Your first step is to take the totals of both the sides but do not record it anywhere. Just memorize it. After memorizing it, I came to know that the debit side is heavier and the credit side is lighter or lesser. So whichever is the heavier amount is to be written as the total on both the sides. Correct? After doing that, you are supposed to reduce the lesser total from the greater total. So the greater total for me was 90,000 and the lesser total for me was 42,000. So 90,000 minus 42,000 gave me 48,000 which is the balance cash that is still remaining in my hand. See this is common sense. You don't need to know a lot of tricks of accountancy over here. All you need to know is I had a total of 90,000 rupees. Right. And I want to find out how much is remaining in my hand. So in order to find out how much is remaining in your hand, you should know how much did you spend in the entire month. Clear? So this is how you solve a sum on cash book, simple cash book. So whenever you have to draw simple cash book, there are certain rules. First rule, only pay attention on cash. Do not indulge into any bank transactions or into any credit transactions. Secondly, debit side is the receipt side of a cash book and credit side is the payment side of the cash book. Every debit side item has a prefix called to and every credit side item has a prefix called buy. Correct? After that, the only thing that you have to focus on is how much cash are you paying or how much cash are you receiving as a business organization. Please do not refer to the sum as a businessman. Refer to the sum as a business organization. Think about the organization before yourself. With that, I come to the end of today's video. If you have understood today's video, then please give it a like, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a new upload. I upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If you have any queries or suggestions, you can use the comment box down below. Again, I am only covering six subsidiary books. If you want me to cover the other remaining two to three subsidiary books, please comment it down below and I will do it for you. At that note, see you in my next video. Till then, this is Professor Tanmay Kesarkar signing off. Good luck and take care.